Hello everybody joining our class today. Um, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be talking about um, a couple different things. First thing is we're going to be talking about is testing next week. We are going to do all testings next week through our one-on-one -on -one lessons to where you guys will schedule your one-on-one -on -one lesson. You guys will do that via VentureIntros.com. So if you guys have not done a one-on-one -on -one lesson before, please make sure you schedule one for next week and only one for next week. Try not to schedule five. That way every single person in the schools can get tested from their instructor and then you're testing your instructor is going to have a list of things for you guys to do it's going to be things like your form your bully self-defense your stranger danger and we're going to do anything and everything we can via camera in order to test you guys it will be a little bit different another thing that we're going to be doing is we're also going to be doing a workout today with a box now one thing i want you guys to think about is when you guys have a successful mindset one really important thing to include in that successful mindset is the ability to overcome obstacles. I know that you guys don't have every single thing perfect in perfect conditions right now in order to train Taekwondo, but I want you guys to be able to find things that you do have and use those things. So myself and Mr. Martin, we are going to have you guys use a basic object today. It can be a water bottle, it can be a box. All you're gonna do is you're gonna use this object and this object is going to become kind of a training tool that you guys have today, okay? So we're first going to bow into our lesson today, and then um, we're going to start using our object. If you guys do not have an object, go grab it really fast. Face front, go tree it. Come in. Excellent. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this object, we're going to put it right there in the middle of the floor. We are going to get you guys kind of your muscles woken up here a little bit and moving forward. So... We are going to go for 45 seconds to where you guys are switching your feet and touching your toe on the top of your object. This object can be a pillow, really any item in your house. Ready? 45 seconds and go. So switching, just touching. Now when you're doing this, we've been talking about sparring all week in our live classes. So what I want you guys to do is only pop on the balls of your feet. This is really important. Try not to let your heels touch the ground as you guys do this, okay? So make sure you do every single exercise with Mr. Martin here. You guys got 25 seconds left switching your feet. One foot at a time, just touching the item. Try not to knock it over. 15 seconds left, guys, let's go. 15 seconds, go, go, go. If you do knock it up, go over, just pick it right back up. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Switching five seconds, go faster. Let's see if you guys keep pace with Mr. Martin, let's go. And freeze right there. All right, now our next drill today in our warm-up section of this training is going to be jumping from side to side over the box. So you guys are gonna be like this, feet together, knees together, and then you guys are gonna jump pulling your knees up. It's gonna be a much harder exercise, so what we're going to do is you guys are going to um, only do it for 30 seconds jumping from side to side. I wanna see if you guys can jump just as high as Mr. Martin, which is helping us out today, okay? Ready, 30 seconds, and go. Jumping from side to side, let's go. Try to make sure on camera you guys stay at the same pace, jumping from side to side. What I want you to do, if you notice, Mr. Martin's heels are not touching the ground. I wanna make sure you guys at home, your heels are not touching the ground either. 15 seconds left. So you guys got 15 seconds. Excellent, keep jumping. All right, last 10 seconds. Let's pick up the pace, everybody, let's go. Pick up the pace. Five seconds, and freeze right there. All right, now go ahead and breathe here for a second. All right, now, you guys are, this time, we're gonna work a little bit on your explosiveness and a little bit on your balance as well. So you're gonna have one foot up this way, then you're going to be switching from one side to the other side, just like this as you do it. Now your goal is gonna be to switch and hold balance, then switch, and hold balance, then switch, and hold balance as you do it. You wanna make sure that when you do it, you're not hopping all over the place. What you wanna do is you wanna make sure you stop, hold your balance. This is gonna help you guys with your kicks and your forms, and in sparring as well. So let's see if you can do this as well as Mr. Mark, okay? Get ready, get set, and go. Jumping from one side to the other side. Now, I want you guys to hold that for two seconds if you can. Two seconds. One, two, switch. One, two, switch. When you switch, you want it to be fast. 
really fast, but then freeze and hold. Switch, freeze and hold. With Mr. Martin, you guys are almost halfway done. Keep that knee above your waist. Above your waist. Now I want you to jump a little bit faster the second 30 seconds. As you go from side to side, try to set your foot without bouncing around. If you notice, Mr. Martin is not hopping or bouncing at all. He is setting his foot in place as he does this. So keep going. You guys have about 10 seconds. Let's go. 10 seconds switching your knees. Make sure that knee stays above your waist though. Five seconds left. Keep going. Five seconds. And freeze right there. Excellent. All right, guys. So now what you're going to do, okay, is it depends on your rank level. If you guys are a higher rank, you're going to go back and you're going to do all of that again a second time. Okay? So if you're camo and up, you're going to do all of those exercises twice. If you guys are white, orange, yellow, you can do all of those exercises twice if you would like to. Okay? Then we're going to move on to our next part here. All right, guys, now next what we're gonna do is we're actually going to be using a chair. So if you guys have a chair, um, whether it's a smaller chair or a taller chair, just make sure it's something that you guys can do this next drill on. If you guys um, wanna pause, go and pause the video, grab a chair, come back. Make sure you have mom and dad's permission before you guys use any item out of your house. Another thing that can work great for this is a couch cushion that you guys pick up and then set right here on your side. Okay, so first drill that we're going to do is going to be making sure that you guys chamber your sidekick nice and tight in next to your body. So Mr. Martin's going to help us demonstrate here. He's going to be right there next to his, the chair. And as he does this, he's going to keep his hip locked to the chair. Then he's going to pivot away from the chair with his base leg, pick his knee up over the chair, and then kick directly towards me, rechambering past the chair and setting his foot back down. What this is going to do is it's going to make your sidekick not swing up and swing down like this. You wanna make sure that whenever you do a side kick, you're picking your knee in nice and tight as you guys do your side kicks, okay? So I'm gonna count out five on each side before we move on to our next drill. I want you guys to pay attention though to how close Mr. Martin is to the chair. Depending on flexibility level, you guys may need to move a little bit further away from the chair, but the better you are at this drill, the closer you guys are gonna be. Now, Mr. Martin's gonna pick up, he's gonna chamber, he's gonna kick, go one, re-chamber, pass the chair. Now, ready, go two, re-chamber, and go three. Now, really try to make sure you stay as close to the chair as possible. Ready, go four, re-chamber, five, re-chamber, six, and set it down, we're doing one extra. Now go to switch feet, other side, and now pick your knee up all the way, chambered in. Ready, go one, re-chambered, then land, ready, go two, re-chambered, and land, ready, go three, re-chambered, and land, ready, go four, re-chambered, and land, go five, and to make sure we're even, we'll do one extra one on this side, ready, go six. Excellent. Now we're going to change this up. Now next drill, Mr. Martin is going to be working on how fast he picks up that chamber. When I'm in my form, I don't want to pick up my chamber and then hold it here for a couple minutes before I kick. What I want to do is I want to pick up my chamber, kick, and then set it down. So our next two drills are going to be 100% about how you do that in an appropriate motion, making it to where it doesn't hold up for uh, 10 seconds before you guys kick, okay? So Mr. Martin is now gonna pick up his knee really fast, pulling it in tight, using the chair as support. The reason he's using the chair as support is really simple. He wants to make sure his shoulders do not sink all the way down this way. He wants to try to keep his shoulders as straight up and down as possible. When you're doing this, don't have your head down here by the chair. Use the chair for support so your upper body can stay nice and straight as you guys do it. So pay attention to the way Mr. Martin's doing this. He's gonna pick his knee up, He's going to set it back down. Keeping his body alignment intact. Ready, go two, and land. Now go three, and land. Now go four, and land. Now go five, and land. Now we're gonna go other side, ready? Switching to the other side, exact same thing. He's gonna put his arm here, almost fully extended, to where his shoulder does not go down, okay? Ready, now he picks up his knee, chamber one, 
Now ready, go two, and three, and four, and five. Excellent, now everybody together, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a side kick. But the way that we're gonna do this side kick is we're gonna pull our knee up, right as it comes up, we're gonna shoot it out and then pull it back and then set it down. The goal here is to get your full side kick faster. Whenever you're doing a form at a very high level, you wanna make sure, again, that you don't lean your shoulders too far one direction or the other direction. What you do is you keep your shoulders and your body straight up and down. You also don't pick your knee up and hold here for a minute. Most people, when they go off balance, it's because they pick their knee up, they hold it too long, they start hopping around in their form. Instead of picking your foot up, fully chambering, kicking really fast, and then pulling your kick back, that is what we're working on here. So Mr. Martin is gonna maintain body position. Pick his knee up in a circular motion as he picks it back and shoots it straight out this way, then he's gonna rechamber. Now, we're gonna do 10 of those really fast. Ready, go one. Now go two. Now pull your knee even tighter, guys. Ready, go three. Now go four. Now go five. Go six. Seven with Mr. Martin. Go eight. Nine. And 10. Excellent. Now Mr. Martin's going to switch other side. Exact same concept. Working on this. Ready? Set and chamber. Go one. Now go two. Ready? Go three. Making sure you're picking up, getting that foot out fast. Ready? Go four. Five. Six. All right, we're going to do the last ones really fast. Go seven. Eight. Nine. Picking that knee up, and last one, 10. Excellent, guys. So these are some psychic drills that you guys can do on a chair in order to improve your forms and make sure that your forms are looking really, really good and really strong. Chairs are amazing tools in order to make sure you're focused on your body position and your knee instead of just working on trying not to fall over as you're kicking. So this is going to be an amazing training tool using a chair. You also can use um, railing for stairs at home. You guys can use your bed. You guys can use, um, again, you can use a couch cushion for this, or you guys can use the edge of your couch. As long as you have permission from mom and dad before you guys step up and you guys use all of these different tools. All right, guys, so for our next drill here, what we're going to be using is we're going to be using some household items in order to help you guys work on your targeting and the accuracy of your kick. Okay, so what we're using today is we're going to be using a roll of toilet paper, right? And I have three rolls of paper towels and a chair today. Most people will have this at their house. However, if you do not, all you have to do is find something similar. You guys can use a couch cushion on its side, something that's soft in order to set the toilet paper on. The reason you want to make sure that it's soft is in case I kick and I let's say I miss and I hit lower, I don't want this to be a hard steel pull in order for me to hurt my foot. Now, using things around your house is a great example of you guys setting goals and making sure that there's nothing in the way of your goals. So let's say that there's an obstacle that's in the way. Right now, all of our obstacles are we're stuck at home, but we have goals in Taekwondo, like becoming a black belt, becoming a master, becoming a second degree or a third degree, or even stepping up and becoming a champion in tournaments if you guys are competing in the tournament circuit. Everybody has different goals. What we need to work on here is we need to work on overcoming that obstacle, the fact that we don't have professional training equipment right now, the fact that I'm stuck at home. We wanna use that to our advantage and also have fun overcoming those obstacles. So this is gonna be a fun drill for you guys to experiment with at home if you have mom and dad's permission. I don't want anybody here to take a toilet paper roll and kick it unless mom and dad say it's okay. I also want to make sure that mom and dad passes your guys' setup and make sure that what's under that toilet paper roll is really soft. Now, the reason I like stacking toilet paper on top of each other or using paper towels is because paper towels are very soft. However, there's another reason as well. If I kick incorrectly, I'm going to end up knocking the whole stack over. And as you guys do this, if you stack toilet paper on top of each other, you're gonna notice that's very easy to do as you guys move forward. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I'm kicking and I'm kicking, moving my foot straight across. That's gonna take proper body position. 
to where I pick my knee up and I make sure that my body sideways and my shoulders are up and down. I don't want my shoulders one direction or the other direction. I want my shoulders straight up and down as I do this. That way I can just point my knee. Wherever I point my knee is where I'm gonna kick. If I point my knee down here, I'm gonna end up kicking down here. If I point my knee here, I'm gonna end up kicking here. So my goal is to point my knee directly at my target. So once I set my foot up and I turn my body and I pick my knee up this way and I have my knee pointed right where that toilet paper roll is, then it's easy for me to kick and hit the toilet paper roll off the top, okay? So what you guys are gonna do is you guys are gonna play with that concept. Now, once you have that down, here's something that I want you to work on. I want you to work on picking your knee up a little bit faster and kicking without holding your knee so much. Then I want you to work on the fact that you guys have an even stance here, then you guys pick it up just like you guys were sparring in a sparring stance and I pick it up this direction as I move forward with that foot. The faster I can set my knee, the faster I can accurately kick at my target in front of me. So your guys' challenge is to start this out with round kicks and then get to the point where you guys are doing all kinds of different kicks. You can do front leg round kick, back leg round kick, front leg hook kick, spin hook kick. You guys can start to do outer crescent kicks over the top of it and inner crescent kicks over the top of it. And you guys can find fun, interactive, different ways in order to hit our toilet paper off the top of your guys' setup. Again, before you do this drill, make sure you guys have mom and dad's permission, right? And then have a lot of fun with it. Let's see if you guys can do the most creative kick if you guys would like to, post it on our Facebook page and we'll make sure that we pop it up on there and we work with you guys and, and maybe myself and Mr. Martin will try to come up with a new challenge as well. All right guys, so after working on all of those drills, hopefully you guys had a lot of fun and you guys went back and you did all of those drills multiple times and you raised each drill to your skill level. If you guys are a black belt, you wanna make sure that if you're kicking the toilet paper roll, instead of doing a round kick, Maybe what you're doing is you're doing a jump spin hook kick, or you're doing a jump 360 outer crescent kick, or as a second degree, you're doing your tornado kick and hitting the toilet paper off without causing the rest of the toilet paper to fall. What we're gonna do now for our exercise today is we're gonna give you guys a really, really good long stretch in a stretching sequence that you guys can do at home here in order to help you guys out with flexibility during this time. One of, these, one of my goals during this time of quarantine is to get in better shape um, and spend the time stretching and running and um, working out and making sure that I improve myself during this time. I'm gonna give you guys a stretching workout that's very easy to do at home, but this is gonna allow you guys to really take some time and really develop flexibility um, in a way that's gonna be super, super good and positive for you guys, okay? So first thing that we're gonna do, right? And I do not have a timer with me today, so we're gonna do everything for about 30 seconds to a minute here. First thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my feet apart this way. Now, as I put my feet apart this way, I start kind of doing a warm up stretch. If you guys are training the way that you should, right? You guys are gonna notice that you guys are incredibly sore, right? Just like I'm incredibly sore from working out um, right alongside you guys today, okay? So we're gonna kind of move and just kind of loosen up. These are some drills that I like to do um, loosening up when I stretch. Then what I do is I pull my feet in this way. I'm gonna pop all the way down here and then I'm gonna take this foot and I'm gonna step this foot all the way out here in front of me, making sure that I reach down and I grab over to this side here. Now, I'm gonna reach all the way down this way pushing my foot all the way to the floor, trying to, to get as low as I possibly can. Now what I'm gonna do, right, is I'm gonna go the other side, I'm gonna pull this foot in, now I stick this foot out here. Again, these are great stretches I like to do, especially if I'm really sore, my legs really hurt from the workouts the day before, these are great stretches for you guys to do. So reach all the way over, grab this foot, if you can, if you want a challenge, you can try to balance like that, Excellent, now you're gonna pop that foot back in, and then you're going to start to pop your feet from here out just a little bit further. Now you're gonna move from side to side. Now I probably had my feet a little over double shoulder width, so I'm not going down on the splits as far as I can. Again, I'm just trying to loosen up. Loosening up nice and easy from side to side.
And then now I'm gonna go down a little bit further. And again, I'm gonna go side to side. Then a little bit further, side to side. Now I'm gonna sit backwards a little bit, then I'm gonna reach my hands down in the center as I breathe. So I'm gonna reach and breathe as much as I can as I go down in the center and I try to relax. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna breathe in, breathe out as much as I can. As I breathe out, I'm gonna go down a little bit further. Now, one thing stretching that really helps me is if I think about my goals, okay? We talked about goals and overcoming obstacles a little bit before this, but I wanna think about, all right, what are my goals in Taekwondo? What are my goals in life? What are my goals in school? What are my goals at my job? What am I doing in order to um, help myself improve in all of those areas? So with my feet out this way, I'm gonna sit and I'm gonna think about my goals. Another great place to do this is why you guys are running. So if you guys are running, that is an amazing place for you guys to step up and say, all right, I'm gonna be working on my goals, right? So me thinking about them, setting them, thinking about where I'm at with each goal, what obstacles I'm overcoming at the time, all of these are incredibly important things to do. Now let's reach all the way over to our left side and grab our left foot again, breathing in, breathing out. Now, as I do these three stretches, and I'll show you kind of how I, how I move these stretches forward and gain flexibility here, but as I do these stretches, what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I'm doing them for about 30 seconds to a minute at least. If I really wanna get a good stretch, I'm gonna leave them for over a minute worth of time. So reaching down and grabbing this foot and breathe. Now, after about a minute here, Okay, I'm gonna go over to my other side. Now I'm gonna grab the other foot and I'm gonna hold it as I breathe in. I breathe out as deep as I can. Then I go down a little bit further. Then I breathe in, out as deep as I can. And then I go over just a little bit further. Now, I'm gonna hold again on this side for somewhere around 45 seconds, um, minimum 30, but somewhere around the 45 second to a little over a minute mark. Now I'm gonna reach back down in the center, but before I do this, this is where I accelerate this stretch a little bit. So I've already gone down in the center and I've already gone down on my left side and my right side. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try to increase the angle. It doesn't matter if you guys are in full splits or not, you guys can actually increase the angle here by putting one hand in front of you, one hand behind you, picking up your hips and pushing them forward. Now, once I pick up my hips and I push them forward, it my heels stay in the exact same spot, but if you guys notice this from a top view, my angle went a little bit wider. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach all the way down like this in full front, and I'm gonna try to get as far down as I can in the front again, breathing in, Breathing out, then I'm gonna hold. I'm gonna keep my goals in mind. Never gonna be tight. I'm gonna make sure that I'm going back and forth and wiggling. I never wanna be tight. I never want to be, um, I always wanna be loose while I'm stretching. Now, after I spend about another 45 seconds to a minute in the center, Right, I'm going to reach all the way over and I'm going to go back over to my right side, leaning this direction, grabbing this foot, and then breathing as I go all the way down on this side, in and out. A lot of us, when we do Taekwondo, we struggle with that flexibility in order to kick properly. Um, I know I do, one of the things that's easier for me is strength, and one of the things that's harder for me is flexibility. So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I'm stretching a ton and I'm stretching in a way to where I can stretch for a long time. If I'm just holding the splits in the air, doing that for an hour straight is a little impractical. It's not impossible, but doing this stretch to where you guys spend a good 30 minutes stretching each day, you can dramatically increase your flexibility splits wise if you guys use this stretching method I'm giving you guys today. Then after I spend about 45 seconds to a little over a minute on this side, I go back down on this side. 
Now I breathe, and as I breathe and I stay nice and loose, I'm gonna try to go all the way back over, grabbing this foot if I need to, or just leaning my upper body in this direction. You guys will notice, you guys might even feel a stretch in your lower back as you guys do this, as you guys are turning and moving. So make sure you guys breathe all the way over. And hold. Now at this point, right, if you guys are trying to get a really long period of stretching, which I would recommend, if you can, get a 30 minute period of stretching in, um, especially if flexibility is an issue, right? If you're younger, right, um, then that's probably not gonna be the best. You probably should work on developing your kicks and your strength. But if you guys are a little bit older of a Taekwondo student, I would highly recommend over 30 minutes of stretching during this time of quarantine. Now, what I can do in order to extend the time of this stretch is I can take my hand in front, put my hand in back, and then I can move my hips forward again, which would then increase my angle once more, helping me stretch more, and then as I go, I go more and more and more and more. Then I go over to one side, the other side, and then back down in the center. Now, there's a couple other stretches that I always do in my stretching section as well. One is, okay, gonna be my butterfly stretch, pulling my feet in, pushing my knees down towards the floor and pushing my nose on my toes. So we're gonna do that stretch here. Everybody follow me and put your nose in your toes. Then I'm gonna give you guys some bonus stretches that you guys can use, right? If you guys wanna pause the tape before we go on to our form section of this, right? You guys can kind of pause the tape and then do all of these stretches and spend 30 minutes stretching um, all by yourself, depending on kind of what your goals are and what your your flexibility goals are, okay? Now, so I do my butterfly stretch and I push my nose towards my toes. My goal here is make sure that my feet come in close, my knees are pushed down nice and far. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you guys just one, uh, four bonus stretches, uh, two on each side, okay? So this foot goes here and it goes up this way. Then I push my pelvis down towards the ground in preparation for helping um, develop my splits. Then what I do is I take my foot here and then I reach down and I grab my foot very straight, okay? That's the first stretch. I go back this way. Now I hold this for a little while. I would say a good 15 seconds. And then I go back to here, all the way down, 15 seconds. Then I do the same thing on the other side. I push my pelvis down towards the ground. This knee is up. Then I go straight and then I grab my foot like this here. Then I come up, I push my hips forward, and then I go nice and straight, grabbing my foot this way. Then after that, my second stretch is gonna be my front splits on each side. So what that's gonna look like is I'm gonna go up, then I'm gonna turn this way. Now, what's important here is it's not important how far you go down. What it is is, is that I have my hips stretched here and I'm not leaning to one side or the other side. What I'm able to do is I'm able to put one hand on either side and I'm able to push this front leg out as far as I can get it. Once it's as far as I can get it, then I'm gonna try to push my nose down to my knee and then go over to the other side doing the exact same thing. Again, to do these stretches, don't feel like you guys have to step up and you guys have to be crazy flexible. When I started Taekwondo, right, I was 14 years old, and at 14 years old, my level of flexibility was very, very low. I want to say that I could probably go like this. It's about how flexible I was. And that's just naturally um, how unflexible I am as a person personally. And stretching has allowed me to, um, at different points in my life, be able to go into full splits on um, all three sides, in the middle and on my right side and on my left side. Um, and then also be able to do things like the butterfly stretch really well and other stretches at a high level. Flexibility is really a disciplined thing. It's something that if you guys put the work and you guys put the effort into, you guys can get it. However, for some people, it's gonna take way more effort. So this is a great time for you guys to maybe watch a movie and jump in the splits. The stretching I just showed you, 
you guys can do while you guys watch a movie or watch a TV show or, or entertain yourself in some other way. And you can easily do that for 30 minutes if your mind is um, distracted just a little bit on something else. So I hope that you guys use this and I hope it helps your guys' flexibility um, as a big part of our lesson today. All right, all of my first degree black belts out there, what we're going to do is we're gonna give you guys a forms challenge this week, which is gonna be a little bit different. Now, your form challenge is going to be something called phone booth form. So we're going to teach you guys how to do your form in a very, very small area with a drill that my instructor used to do with me 10 years ago um, as a fun drill to do in class, even though we had tons of room. So we're going to be using this drill, given you guys are probably doing this in your living room and do not have a ton of space in order to practice your form or do your moves. Mr. Martin, he's going to show you how to do this. What's going to happen is, Every single move, you're gonna adjust just enough to where you stay on the same spot. So walk through the form with Mr. Martin and then you guys can pause the video and then you guys can do this a hundred times and have fun with this, okay? So face the front, go trigger it. Come here, Ready, and step. Double palm heel strike. Block, chop, knee strike, front kick. Turn, side kick, punch in front of you, block behind you, punch, jump front kick. Now step together, step out, concentration, knife hand, compound, square lock. Step up, front kick, ground kick. Circle, circle, turn, block, Hot inner form block, block, low block, punch, knife hand strike behind you, side kick. Step together, step out, low block, punch, punch, jump, side kick, step, spin, hook kick, double length and block. Now, jump, front kick, turn, back fist punch, rich hand, turn, outer crescent kick, jump, round kick, high block, low block, punch, turn, elbow, elbow, knife hand, punch, elbow, Step together, turn, twin, palm heel strike, block, chop, knee strike, front kick, side kick, punch, turn, upset knee hand, jump front kick, turn, compound score block, concentration, step up, front kick, ground kick, circle, block, circle, strike, Turn, block, inner form block, low block, punch, knife hand, side kick, step together, step out, low block, punch, punch, jump, side kick, step, spin, hook kick, now block, jump, front kick, turn, back fist, punch, rich hand, outer crescent kick, jump, round kick, now high block, low block, punch, Turn, elbow, elbow, knife hand, punch, elbow. And circular, downward, double knife hand strike. Now, one thing is first, as you guys can see, is Mr. Mark was able to do your guys' entire form. Even there's, even though there's steps, spin hook kicks, jump side kicks in there, in a very, very small space, and he was able to practice it and work on his rhythm of each of his moves. It's actually a really fun challenge in order to do your form in a very small space. So we hope you guys have fun with that this week and you guys get lots of practice in on your Taekwondo and your forms.